the next speaker is a man with, with many hats, uh, and he is a board member of Spotify. How cool is that? One of the early investors. He's also a partner of venture capital company Northzone, the Greta Garbo of the investment industry. And he's been appointed the best uh, venture capitalist uh, in Europe at Investor All Stars. But that is all dwarfed by his new book that you actually should read. I think it's fantastic. It's heavy metal management and it's going from good to badass. Please welcome Per Jorgen Patton on stage. Please have, a, please have a seat. Thanks. Please have a seat. Heavy metal management. There it is. <laughs> Fresh from the presses. I'm actually mm. contemplating getting a tattoo with your book's title on. Yeah, that, I that, learned that. That would actually resonate pretty well with uh, the idea of the book. And I want to yeah. uh, spend most of the time actually on the book. But first of all, sort of being an investor, picking the Spotify's and the, uh, you know, a lot of other companies. What's, what's the secret sauce? Well, I think for us it's, it's about knowing uh, the really strong entrepreneurs and uh, being there when they are ready to fly. Uh, and being chosen by them, I think, is the most uh, Im important job for me. Uh, it's it's uh, often a misconception that uh, uh, you know the venture capitalists can choose pick and choose between uh, uh, startups. It's actually not the case. It's very competitive to uh, to get the guys like Daniel Ek or uh, Sebastian and Niklas to uh, to uh, accept your money because they have so many alternatives. Mm. Uh, they are incredibly skilled. They are incredibly driven, and they are creating you know magic uh, by the hour. And uh, in in order for us to measure up to such high standards, we have to, you know, we have to be on our toes all the time. Brent said at the Investor Summit yesterday that uh, a lot of the entrepreneurs are partly mad <laughs> or they're, they're, they're over-focused. Uh, yeah, I, I think uh, it probably helps also from our end that uh, uh, most of uh, the North Zone partners are former entrepreneurs. Uh, so we're kind of uh, part of the same madness or what have you. And, uh, and also, uh, it, it's, it's great to see Brent here. We were actually the first backers of uh, Last Minute way back in, in the first wave of the internet uh, uh, when that uh, struck. And, and it's great to see how... Uh, guys like uh, Martin Lorenzon, Brent Hoberman, uh, and those who were strong in the first way are now creating Martin Lorenzon, massive, the founder of Trade Doubler yeah, and uh, then of Spotify. Yeah, uh, are creating massive waves uh, when they are continuing in, in their second and, and even some cases third uh, wave of, of onslaught of, of great businesses that are happening. What are the most common mistakes that entrepreneurs do? Well, it's, uh, uh, there, are, there are a few areas that, uh, you know, uh, quite frequently go wrong. Uh, the first one being uh, actually not doing what Niklas was talking about, uh, not hiring smarter people than yourself, mm -hmm. that you try to control the destiny of, of everything and try to control your organization and what everybody's doing. A really strong company with great growth potential, they just hire the best brains and the smartest people, and they just let them run with the idea, and they have a, a, a common vision of where they're going. But because you cannot plan uh, when things are moving so fast, you have to have people that you can rely on, that they are smart enough to make the right decisions when that, when that, uh, that arrives. The second uh, problem that uh, uh, I, I think often uh, happens is that you get some sort of false positives, that you think you're onto something, uh, and you think you have proof, uh, proof that you are building something that is resonating with the audience or with the customers, uh, but you are in effect only talking to um, uh, a, a very small part that is not representative. And then you start to build your infrastructure and you hire people like crazy and all of a sudden you stand there with an organization that's far too big to sustain what the customers are actually uh, 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 willing to, to pay for at the time. And it, so you're scaling too early and you're scaling a product that's actually not the product the customers, when it grows to a more of a mainstream offering, are, are demanding. So sit on the sort of start button a yeah. little bit longer, work more on the product and be sure that it actually works before you launch? Yeah, it's, it's an iterative process and uh, there is the, probably some of you have uh, 
uh, read the book uh, uh, where the Crossing the Chasm, which, which is actually a pretty good description on when you go from uh, you know, the early phases of defining a product uh, with your first customers. Those are not necessarily the customers that you should design your product for in the long run. Uh, and in some cases there are, but in most cases they're not. Mm. Uh, so you have to kind of understand when you're crossing that chasm in order to, to scale. And that is, that is like almost magic or, or a work of art. It's very difficult to, to do that without iterating, iterating, and learning by your mistakes and, and then move on. You know, and, and we were on to that issue also that making mistakes is, is a very important part of the success formula. Mm learning from mistakes uh, uh, rapidly. You probably know that who's the, who the, the guy in NBA who's missed the most shots. In, in the American basketball yeah. league? It's actually Michael Jordan. He's the best scorer of all time in an NBA, but he's also missed the most shots of everybody because he has an enormous activity level and just is out there doing magic all the time. But if you, if you uh, look at all of the companies that Nordson has been involved in, is there any success recipe other than the team? I, I, I get that one. You have a super strong team, you have a super passionate entrepreneur. What are other, are there any other sort of components? Well, Just add this and it usually works. Yeah, well, uh, it, it, it's almost like a cliche to talk about the team as the, the starting point, but, but it really is uh, the team's ability to uh, have that sort of animal magnetism that we think is it's so inc incredibly important to attract partners, to attract uh, uh, smart people, to uh, uh, attract the attention from people like me. And uh, uh, if that happens, uh, there are so many other things that sort of fall in place automatically. Uh, and uh, that doesn't mean that someone has to be a you know, great uh, stage personality or something like that in order to have that magnetism. It's more about, you know, meeting on minds and making sure that you get your message across to the people you want to, uh, you want to be with. If you get that right, you know, the product is, is, is actually the manifestation of, of that magic. And if uh, the product is, uh, most of the time, uh, when we meet, uh, meet entrepreneurs, we, uh, and, and I need to back, uh, back up a bit there, because when we meet 100 companies, we end up investing in maybe half to one of those. So there is a lot of Yeah, so products. not half of yeah. the 100, but either yeah. half a company or one company. We need to meet 200 companies in order to uh, invest in one. Uh, that means that we see a lot of products mm. and a lot of ideas. And also another key takeaway is that you're not idiots just because a VC says no to you as an investment yeah. if you're looking to no. capital. Yeah, and, and uh, most of the time the products are, are you know, you feel that there, there's something missing because they just don't dare to step out of their comfort zone. But some of these guys, like Daniel Ek and Niklas and everybody uh, that have really made it big, and Brent also, they are just producing products that are, you know, a little bit uncomfortable even, and they are demanding on the customer, and they are very engaging. And that's, I think, the, the secret uh, of, of uh, really successful companies, that they are, you know, they're taking risks when, when it comes to product definition. Heavy metal management. Take us through. I mean, you are uh, you are a metalhead yourself. Oh, You're yes. a good guitar player, uh, and you think that the world should have learned much less from business schools and much more from the likes of Ronnie James Dio and Ozzy Osbourne. Yeah, um, it's <laughs> it, it's actually true, and and uh, uh, we I think we live in a in a, an era where the rational side of uh, of uh, the human nature is grossly overstated and, and is, is actually being given far too much weight. Uh, the, uh, uh, and what, when we uh, were sitting down, um, me, myself and the uh, uh, co-author Hans Olof, uh, we, we sort of figured out, well, what's, what's really uh, different about heavy metal music? Well, well, they have certainly caught the idea that why settle for satisfied customers? They have raving motherfucking fans that are <laughs> just, you know, going, uh, following them around the world. And they do that for 40 years. And they buy merchandise like there's no tomorrow. And, uh, and 
in addition to that, you know, why do you, as a regular corporation, want to settle with, uh, with you know, uh, motivated employees? You know, you want bandmates from hell. You know, that, that's the kind of organization you want to have. And, and uh, uh, we think that the metal uh, bands, they have, uh, it works as a, as a great metaphor for, um, uh, for uh, management. And uh, uh, so what do they do differently then? Well, first of all, they do storytelling uh, in, a, in a league of their own. So if you consider uh, uh, the, the, the Lord of the Rings trilogy or, for instance, uh, uh, the Harry Potter uh, novels, uh, it's ex actually that kind of storytelling that that's the core core of the product with most metal bands. And that pulls in the fan into that world. And you layer that with uh, concert th themes and with uh, album covers and, and uh, uh, all sorts of things. And, and, and it call, oh, you kind of become one with, uh, the, uh, uh, with uh, uh, the fan and the band. And I think that's something that, that a regular uh, corporation can do as well. Uh, and if you look at uh, one pretty good example out there about really powerful storytelling, and I should just uh, ask you to turn on the TV tonight and probably watch the Ica advertising. You know Ica Stig? He's an epic metalhead. Uh, and why is that? Well, because it's like, it's a storytelling that's now been going on for more than 400 episodes for 12 odd years. It has uh, propelled Ica into a different lead in terms of uh, uh, user engagement and, and likability. And why? Because Stig really embodies the idea of his busting his ass to deliver great food at an affordable price in his little corner store. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and that's the kind of storytelling I think every company, being it a paper and pulp company or, or anything, could actually embrace. Mm -hmm. So going on also to, to another element of what the uh, um, heavy metal bands really do well and, and also has in common with great, uh, great entrepreneurs is to be total, you know, no compromise, take no prisoners, just go it all the way. If there is something else that you can consider doing, do that, you know. But if you want to be successful, you have to be um, to the point of possessiveness engaged in what you do. Otherwise, you know, the customers will notice that you're not really there. Mm -hmm. And I think if you guys start to um, apply some of this element of what the metal bands are doing to, to become really close to their, their, uh, their customers, I, I mean, you will become like Apple. You will become like uh, the Swedish software company Propellerhead, uh, which uh, actually the founder, Ernst Nottost, he gets in his inbox um, a couple of times per, per month, people who have actually uh, tattooed the logo of their product, Reason, on, on their arms. That's pretty amazing, a, you know, a software product. And, and that's, a, that's a company, you know, it's, it's not hitting the headline news, but there is an incredibly strong mm -hmm. sense of tribal relationship uh, between the customers and the company. And, and uh, another thing you're writing about is be eternal. Yeah. So don't don't try to pick the latest fad. Be eternal. Yeah. It's 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 like be be consistent and forever is is all about the idea of uh, uh, if you if you stay the course and you build your customer base. That's you. That's the way you you get the right kind of of uh, uh, um, interaction with your customers, and then you can strengthen your product uh, over time. Uh, and if you look at ACDC, for instance, um, uh, he was um, the, the guitarist Angus Young, he was uh, interviewed in a hotel room in Boston once, and then uh, the journalist said, so, okay, Angus, uh, uh, I hear you know, your latest album uh, is a bit of a departure from uh, the old stuff that you've been doing. Uh, uh, and and uh, then he just rose from his chair and you know, a bit pissed off and he said, you know, I get sick and tired when people say we've done 11 albums that sound exactly the same. In fact, we made 12 albums that sound exactly the same. Uh, so, so that's being consistent and very long-term focused. I think that's also part of the, of the 
the model that had made Handelsbank such a great success, for instance, and also IKEA. They have stayed the course. They've been incredibly consistent over time. They have not bothered to acquire all kinds of strange companies in Germany or, or Latvia and, and you know, uh, drifted sideways in, in various ways. So, so there are lots of good uh, lessons to be learned by Angus and, uh, and the guys. But another interesting thing uh, is be masterful and I, I think that was one of the, the key takeaways. A lot, of, a lot of people are just trying to be different and trying to be this, that, and the other. But mm. if you are a guitarist in Ace of Bass, uh, no, Freudian slip. <laughs> Sorry about that, Ulf. Not necessarily Ace of Bass, but if you are in ACDC, yeah. you're a really good guitar player, yeah. right? Yeah. <laughs> it's it's a, um, craftsmanship and mas being master is, I think, the basis for true respect. And if you listen to what Niklas and the others were saying also, it's like finding smart people that, you know, good developers, that they have this respect for being really, really good at what they're doing. And that is very, very prominent in the heavy metal uh, uh, scene, that you have to be, uh, you know, have monster chops as a guitarist. You have to uh, make a drum roll at, like there's no tomorrow. And, and, and it's like, if you can't do that, then you don't get the respect of your peers and not from the, from the audience as well. So they are very, very meticulous about your skills. And in, in most companies, that, that sort of parameter is, is not really taken that seriously. But in some there is, like in Handelsbanken, and, and I have uh, also in the Swedish version of the book, uh, we are using uh, HiQ, the consulting company, as, as an example. They went through the... Uh, the, you know, the dot-com boom and the bust and, you know, everybody else died but them because they were relentlessly focusing on skills of their people. They were putting on them on this, uh, the, the very, must, uh, very hardest uh, uh, assignments and uh, they made sure that they were inspired to go on and, and develop their skills. And they're still the biggest player in the industry now, 15 years later. So you're masterful, you're epic storyteller, you are eternal. Mm. Uh, what are some of the other things that you need to be? <clears throat> well, um, in contrast to, uh, to most other uh, art forms, uh, it's all about expressing uh, instincts. And uh, um, it's, it's like, uh, uh, you know, it's not, uh, it's not a good, you know, it, it's sort of a bad taste uh, party sometimes when you go to a, uh, a metal concert, but, but it's really engaging, you know, and it's sensory, and it really appeals to your, your innermost instincts, you know, it's, uh, it's love, hate, it's death, it's, you know, feel horny, you feel happy, you feel, you know, and, and that's a part of the puzzle that I think every corporate should uh, embrace, that you have to trigger the basic human instincts in order to get true engagement. And also, uh, I, I think, uh, uh, working with the senses, that it's not only a, a boring um, uh, PowerPoint presentation when you're kind of repeating everything that's uh, being said on the bullet points when you're, you're presenting. You should be out there touching the audience. You should be uh, playing some music along with it, and you should uh, move about and uh, ask questions, you know, how many do this and that, and uh, to, to to, to get true engagement. I think uh, 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 that, that's, uh, that's a part that uh, is sorely missed, I think, in, in corporate uh, uh, settings. And you're, you're also taking a swing at a lot of the sort of the more f uh, famous business literature. So in search of excellence, you go for... In search of pestilence. Uh, I think the, the search of pestilence is, is about the idea of uh, uh, the uh, viral uh, capabilities of the new networked economy. I think you better get on top of that uh, uh, idea of, of how you can, as a corporate, harness the power of the viral spreads of the social networks. That is better spent time than you know, rambling on about the search of excellence. <laughs> and then we also have, instead of going from good to great, you're going to go from good to badass. Yeah, uh, we we think the the good to great is is really lame, uh, <laughs> because it's it's uh, it's really not happening when you're you're thinking yeah, great, yeah, great, you know. But so so there are some there are some really cool uh, entrepreneurs that are true badasses, and the top 
in my book is Jan Steenbeck, the late great uh, entrepreneur. He was a true badass. You know, he even kicked out his own sister out of his company in order to run the show as he wanted it to. Uh, and she happened to be the foreign minister of Sweden at the same time. So, so that was not a, a, an easy task, I suppose. Uh, uh, and he built, you know, it, he took a, a company from being a, a, a boring paper and pulp company to create four or five of the most prominent IT companies uh, in Europe. That's, uh, do you that's know what one of his awesome. quotes was? Always guard your bad reputation. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, well, thank you very, very much. I hopefully earn uh, a lot of things that I could use in my companies and the industries I'm involved with. But I'm also starting to hear something else from a distance. Yeah, what could that be? Yeah, we'll see what we can do about that.
Так, мы сейчас играем. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. You're epic. You're storytellers. You're going to be eternal. Fantastic. Thank you very much.